So where do we feel safe? A piece of research that, uh, that we cite is um, work done at a university campus setting where the researchers got a group of people and asked them to walk around the university campus at night on their own. They were sort of 30 or 40 metres behind them. And for these people to record how they felt in different, um, different locations within the university. And what they found was that the, the, the variables for how people responded, how they felt, were whether there were opportunities uh, in a place for them to escape or whether there were opportunities for them to be trapped, whether there are opportunities for a potential attacker to conceal themselves, jump out and go boo. They also looked at uh, the lighting levels. They also thought that that, that, was, a, that was a factor. So um, what works, what, they, what the, the findings were, where there's opportunity for low levels of entrapment, then lighting's, lighting's a factor. So you want to, you want to light those places to make, it, make them feel safer. But um, where uh, high entrapment was possible, then reducing concealment was important, but raising the lighting level isn't, isn't necessarily going to help. It's an interesting piece of research. We prepared the Safer Design Guidelines for Victoria in 2005, um, working with DOJ. Councils were consulted fairly widely, and they told us that, um, that Safer Design is more than just SEPTED. That SEPTED has quite a uh, site-specific focus, but the, there was a sense that Safer Design was more about, it, it, it included essentially the, the wider urban structure, back to the sort of things that I was saying earlier about whether we're designing closed or open environments and how we connect to other parts of the city or other, other parts of our neighbourhoods or communities. But it's a much wider uh, sense than, uh, than, than, say, SEPTED takes. It sets out the principles and approaches that, uh, that you might adopt to minimise opportunities for crime and for people's sense of security and, uh, and safety within their communities. They draw from a number of safer design approaches and the principles for safer design are to maximise visibility and surveillance within the public environment, to see and be seen essentially, because as we see it saw earlier, uh, if we don't feel as though we're being watched or can see an escape route, for example, um, we're not going to feel too safe. We want to provide safe movement, good access, good connections. We want to maximise the possible levels of activity in public places, we feel safer when we're around other people, particularly if those other people are women and children. We want to clearly define the boundaries, if you like, between private space and public space and who's responsible for those. Where we have those blurred lines or it's not clear who's responsible for this place, uh, things start to break down and uh, it doesn't feel as safe. And we need to manage public space so that you know, there's a sense that this, this, this environment is cared for. Someone's responsible. So I'll just quickly run through some of the, some of the elements which talk specifically about safety and that, that uh, can give you an idea of the approach that uh, should be adopted in, in designing a, an urban environment. So... Uh, here we're saying we want to provide uh, high amenity and safe interfaces between different land uses. So where you've got a, a series of land lots bordering a public open space, let's uh, encourage an active frontage toward the public open space so we don't have the backs of buildings or the sides of buildings defining that edge. So windows and doors overlooking public space. It's, uh, it, makes, it makes the environment feel safer. Walking and cycling paths, we want to uh, make those feel safer. So how do we do that? Well, co-locating pedestrian and, and uh, cycle paths and, and, and also vehicle paths. The notion of uh, grade separating footpaths from roads, for example, or taking the pedestrians off in a, some other location from the street, for example, can potentially put the pedestrians into a, into a less safe environment.
because we want to create the opportunity for or the likelihood of informal surveillance, concentrating activity. We do live in a fairly low density city, particularly in the outer parts of Melbourne. Um, and so we want to bring people together, if you like. Uh, pedestrian only environments like malls, um, particularly at night, can feel unsafe. We know that from experience. Talking again about the interface between the street buildings and what happens within the street, arranged doors and windows of buildings to overlook the street. Again, um, that, that issue of eyes on the street that Jane Jacobs spoke about is really important. That's where you feel safer. Looking after the urban environment, maintain clean and attractive and serviceable streets. Um, you know, very targeted and quick responses to re the removal of graffiti. Locating uh, parks and public spaces in convenient, safe and accessible locations. Not off down the back of somewhere that you've got to walk through a dark alleyway to get to. So connect the space to the surrounding public street network or the surrounding pedestrian network. Firstly, put the entries, make sure the entries have clear views to other exits. So once you get in there, you can see a way out and carry the continued pedestrian paths through the space with direct logical routes. Because people do feel safer when there's an obvious path through a, through a space and it will take them on to somewhere else, their destination, if you will. Things like public toilets, playgrounds, those sorts of facilities, put them in accessible and uh, active locations. Because when they're in and out of the way, place, they don't get used. They then get vandalised. Um, they then become a, a manager, management responsibility, usually for councils. It's common sense. And where you've got a local park, it's important to have an active interface, you know, preferably uh, a, a street or, or, or buildings to overlook the park, because it just limits the opportunity for, for seeing and being seen. Trees and planting, um, we talked about the, that issue of seeing and being seen, concealment. Concealment we know is a, is a factor for people's sense of security. Use species with, um, that have clear trunks up to a, you know, or can be trained up to a, a height so you, can, so you can see through. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to create these vegetative uh, screens um, that people can, can hide behind and then choose ground cover and shrub plantings to be no more than about a couple of feet or 600 mil in height. And again, put them in locations to allow clear sight lines along streets and across uh, different mode paths. Lighting, we need it for safe travel and wayfinding through paths and, and, and parks and uh, uh, we want to emphasise you know, where we can go through a space. But we really recommend lighting only those public space areas that are intended for, for nighttime use rather than, sort of, rather than lighting everywhere because you know, the absence of lighting can actually identify areas that uh, you probably shouldn't go because they, they, they will be less safe.